we're going to be looking at the effects of air resistance on projectile motion. That's up with this one. Your physics teacher says that friction, air resistance, and energy loss can be ignored. <laughs> well, what he does. <laughs> so let's remember, first of all, before we do effects of air resistance, let's remind ourselves what happens without air resistance. Okay, without air resistance, what happens? Well, it just goes up and down in a nice parabola. Okay, that's what happens there. It's a nice parabola. Its maximum height is right in the middle. It's symmetric. We can also say that, you know, the, the y direction right here, like the initial speed right here, so u, y, will be the same thing as, you know, down here, for example, v here. If we call this right here v, we call this one here u. We can say that u, y is equal to negative v, y. In other words, the initial speed going upwards in the y direction here is going to be exactly the same as the initial, uh, sorry, the final speed in the y direction, but downwards. So in other words, if this thing goes up at like, I don't know, 15 meters per second, let's say, the vertical component here is, this will be negative 15, or you could say it's 15 meters per second down. All right, all this will happen here. That's if it's without air resistance, then these things will happen. So what happens with air resistance then? Well, air resistance causes a lot of things. That's why I put down bad luck, Brian, with the ghost skydiving ignores air resistance. Because without air resistance, you just drop. Air resistance is really important. Okay, it's, it's um, you know how parachutes work. Actually, if you jump out of an airplane and you have a parachute, all the parachute is doing is increasing your surface area. So it turns out surface area has to do with that. There's other videos I'm going to make as well about buoyancy and about, sorry, about drag force, and that really affects this. So in other words, if you can make your surface bigger, that's going to have your terminal velocity be slower, for example. But air resistance, what it does, of course, it opposes the motion. In other words, if you're flying one way, then air resistance will act the opposite way. It's a frictional force, just like friction does. And the faster you go, the more air resistance there is. That's the key thing here. So air resistance, it opposes the motion, it's true. It increases with the speed of the object. So these are the key things right here with air resistance. So what does that do? Well, on exams, you're just expected to know the qualitative effects. In other words, just the general shape of it. You don't have to necessarily put numbers to it. That's because actually it gets a bit complicated. So here's the key. So with no air resistance, it would be like a nice, you know, parabola that's symmetric here. At least that's what I've tried to draw. What happens in real life with real air resistance? Well, it's still going to start off like a parabola would, except it's going to go lower range and then it actually drops off a lot more sudden. In other words, so it goes up like a parabola kind of nicely. Keep in mind it's lower. Right? This is also less that way. But also keep in mind it's steeper here. So this right here is steeper. So the right side here is steeper than the left side. That's the key things here that you need to know. Okay, so. The range is less. In other words, the distance it travels to the right here is less. The max height is less. And it's steeper on the way down than up. In other words, it's no longer a nice symmetric parabola. If you know those things, that's what you need for the exams.